Welcome to my channel. Here is a mechanics of materials problem that investigates the idea of maximum shear stress in a member that is loaded axially. So here we have a simple model of a wire, very small member. So our cross-sectional area is eight millimeters squared. And we are pulling on that wire in axial tension, 800 newtons. And um, you know, we know that there is tensile stress in the wire, of course, because there's a tensile force. But the question is, you know, does it have shear stress? Spoiler alert, yes, it does. And um, at what orientation does that shear stress occur? All right. I'm going to go ahead. So the problem says uh, construct the state of stress for a stress element oriented at 45 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little cut plane right here. I'm going to label that as 45 degrees. I'll call it plane AA. And I'm going to give this little simple structure an XY coordinate system like this. All right. So we have ways to think through this. We have a couple ways to think through this. Some will be more time consuming than others, but let's let's lay out our options. Okay, so if we want to know the stresses at that stress element, um, we could, I'm going to get a new layer. I think I forgot to do that. Okay. We could cut at plane AA. We could solve for the normal stress and the shear stress at that plane by just doing force over area. Um, but that wouldn't be enough. We would also have to cut at another plane, which I will call creatively BB. And here's what I mean by that. If I zoom, 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 zoom in, grab a fine marker and pick a uh, stress element, maybe right here. It is aligned. to that 45 degree coordinate system, okay? So that's gonna be my point of interest. In addition to AA, I also need this cut. I'll do this one in a different shade of blue. And the purpose of that cut will be to expose and compute the stresses that are normal to line BB. All right, so we'd have to do this twice. Now, hopefully, hopefully you can all see that due to the symmetry of this problem, you could skip a step, right? We would expect to see the normal stresses with respect to the AA direction be the same as the BB direction. So technically you could skip that step, um, but we're gonna look at a couple different ways to solve this problem. All right, so that's gonna be method one. So that's kind of a manual, manual approach. Our second method, method two, will be to use the stress transformation equations. Okay. These are the ones that we derived in class. So you can use a procedure to derive these using triangular free bodies. 
um, but you can kind of plug and chug through these and note of caution. You must, must have all of your signs, S-I-G-N-S -S signs, correct. Or you, this will not work because this is a great shortcut, but lots and lots of errors with respect to signs. So we'll try that one as well. And um, our third method. will be to use Moore's circle to transform stresses. The Moore circle is nothing more than a mathematical relationship. It is a mathematical illustration of the stress transformation equations. Um, in this particular video, so basically you've got these three methods at your disposal, but in this video, I am going to do methods one and two only. And we'll get into more circle in a later video. All right, let's start with our cuts. Let's do AA first. I'm going to pick the right side of the body. Cut AA right here. Snip, 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 snip. Copy merged and paste that so we can draw on top of it. Enlarge it. Okay. We need to construct our X prime axis. It is the outer normal to the cut plane. It is coincident with the centroid of the cross section. So, so this this is a um, a wire. So our cross-sectional shape is a circle. And so our centroid lies right there. Trying to eyeball that to get it reasonably close to 90 degrees or perpendicular to AA. I think that looks pretty good. Shift down just a little bit. Okay, so there is my X prime. How about Y prime? Where is that? So we need to do our right hand rule. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. Okay, we need to do our right hand rule. What that means is that we just want to take our native coordinate system, rotate it around until X is the outward normal, just like that. And that shows us where Y is. So Y prime runs down that slope. We will add that to our picture. When we get to use the equations, we will have to define theta. Theta is defined as the angle from the xy coordinate system to the x prime y prime coordinate system. So for our example, theta will go all the way from here to here. And let's figure out what that is. So. Basically, we're going to add up 90 degrees plus 45 degrees. So theta has a magnitude of 135 degrees. And there is a sign with this. So since we're going counterclockwise from xy to x prime, y prime, we call that a positive. Okay, so this way 
is defined as positive. And that sign will be very important once we get into the equations. All right. Let's put our free body in equilibrium. I'll choose a yellow color for this vector. It needs to be coincident with the centroid, of course. And I'll just put this puppy into static equilibrium. That's 800 Newtons. Now it's time to make a bounding box. So I want to offset my y axis. through the tip of that 800 Newton vector. Wanna, I'll go ahead and offset it so you can see all the steps. Okay, next one we wanna make that parallel to X prime and then offset it right there. That is our bounding box. I usually do these dashed, so. All right, let's zoom in, we wanna break that 800 Newton into two components. One, that is perpendicular to the cut plane, namely this one. And one, that is in plane or parallel to the cut plane. And I'll call that V for shear force. I'll just start right there, that's fine. Okay. Of course, these one at 45 degrees make these triangles as easy as possible. There's no way to miscommunicate or misinterpret. We've got this right angle here. So we have this 45 degree angle. We have this 45 degree angle. There's a right angle up there. So all I need to do is say that N is equal to V equals sine, I'm sorry. 800 newtons, I don't want to forget my force, times sine 45 degrees, which is the exact same thing as 800 newtons times cosine 45 degrees. This is one to commit to memory if you haven't done so already. Square root of 2 over 2. And once you multiply that out, those are going to be equal to 565.7 newtons, and that's to four sig figs. Okay, cool. We want to get stresses on that plane. So we're thinking about our equations. We have to divide the 565.7 Newtons by the area. And how are we going to get this area of an inclined plane? This one's hard to visualize. So I made you a CAD model. It looks like this. So basically, we've been working with this two dimensional view just like this. So this is a side view of our, of our wire. In my CAD model, it essentially looks like a cylinder. And as you can see, I've taken out my little imaginary saw and sliced a 45 degree plane. Now, the way that we're looking at it, you know, our cut looks like this, right? Just kind of turn around to the other side, which is fine too. Uh, but we're cutting at 45 degrees. My CAD model isn't 45 degrees, by the way. I left this in terms of theta. So if you're wondering why it looks like it's 3060 and not a 45 degrees, it's probably because it is a 3060 or some other rotation that I did. But we can generalize this for any uh, rotation. We're going from the x axis to the x prime. The x prime defines the normal, outward normal of the cut plane. So, this vector from where this hand is in the middle of the screen here up to that point, that is the x prime axis. Here is the x axis from here to here. Longitudinal theta measures from one to the other. Now, a couple of things I want you to 
to be aware of if you haven't already done so. When you slice at this angle, instead of having a circular cross section, you do get an elliptical plane. Okay, so you could come up with this. Um, so D I'm using is the diameter of the circle. There's that ellipse floating up above. I just copied it from the one that's laying down here up above so you could see it easily and dimension it, but it's a copy paste. It's the exact same thing there. And we know that the y direction or left to right dimension is d that's the diameter and then on this other axis of the ellipse we're going to go d cosine theta and this has to do with the way that we can project areas in directions and i think the best way to, to see and understand this projection i'm going to do this two-dimensional in view here watch it turns and the two-dimensional projected view of the ellipse is the exact same as the, of the circle of the cylinder here, right? You see that? Okay, so that's what is meant by a, a projection. So an ellipse projected about this axis turns into a circle. And that's why we can use this um, cosine relationship in the denominator of this expression. That's essentially what we'll do, kind of getting back to our example problem is um, compute the area of our plane. My area of plane AA, uh, that one is equal to pi, oops, I forgot the, this was actually given to you in the problem. So we don't even have to do pi r squared. We just take the eight millimeters squared And divide by cosine of theta. In our case, that's 45 degrees. Okay. And I'll uh, get you to that one. 11.31 millimeters squared is the value there. All right. Our value of our normal stress n over a plug in 565.7 newtons over 11.31 millimeters squared that'll get 50 megapascals and once we do our shear stress tau it's going to be a very similar equation since these forces are the same, we're using the same area, so I'll just kind of skip to the conclusion. 50 megapascals. The normal stress does have a sign associated with it. So because that is tensile, arrow pointed away from the body, then our normal stress is also tensile. Our shear stress, we don't tend to report these answers with positive or negative signs. So these are known to be magnitudes. This is a magnitude only, but we want to illustrate the direction on the stress element itself. To do that, I think I'm just going to, let me think about how I want to do this. I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to color it white so we're going to wash out all the color and then fade it out a little bit cool add a new layer and now i can zoom in and get a handle on this little stress element so zoomy zoom there we go i'm gonna get a fine pen draw that geometry I need to put in a coordinate system. So I, I'm gonna pan over and remind myself Y prime is way down there. X prime is going that way. So when I go to present this answer, I would need to have that coordinate system explaining the marks on this stress element. And my normal stress would go this way. Normal stress would go this way. My shearing stress is going to match that direction on that side. So we start there. And then after that, once you have one shear stress, you can figure out the other hidden ones. So this is 50 uh, megapascals 
This is 50 megapascals. Shear stresses. Actually, I don't usually, I typically don't um, label that twice. If you do that, it's not wrong. It's just less conventional. Um, I'll put 50 megapascals down here next to the shear stress. And the one thing that this analysis is not capturing, so I'm going to do this in pink and put a question mark. We do not know this stress, sigma x prime equals what? Okay, is there one there? Well, hopefully you're able to intuit that, yeah, there is one there, but you can't see it in this view. And all that means is that we're going to need to go to our other cut through the cross section. So I'm going to turn off these layers. Awesome. Let's cut through BB. Let's cut through BB. This one I promise I'll do before you fast forward the video. I promise I'll do this one a lot faster. I'm going to take the left side. You could take either one. You get this exact same answer if you're following the procedure properly. I'm going to take this side, edit, uh, copy, merged, edit, paste. Let's put this one in equilibrium, zoom out a little bit, make it a little bigger, move it down here. Okay, I'm going to do this one faster than before because we've kind of been through this in detail. There's the 800 Newton uh, force that we're applying to the member. Put it in equilibrium. Here is the equal and opposite 800 Newton force. We need to do our coordinate system, so watch this carefully. We want the x prime to be our outward normal to the plane. So x prime is an awful line. x prime goes this way. We use our right hand rule to spin that xy coordinate system about z. That tells us the direction of y prime. So here's your concept question. Is it up there? Or is it down here? Okay, and it is up here. So we're just doing that rotation to figure that out. Next, we do our bounding box. So I need a line parallel to Y prime that goes through the tip of that vector. I need a line parallel to x prime that goes through the tip of the vector. The 800 Newton is the hypotenuse, even though my sketch doesn't make the prettiest right angles I've ever seen. This is intended to be a right angle. That is intended to be a right angle. And we can break this force into its two components. There is one. There is the other. Um, from our prior From our prior um, calculations, we know the value of those two forces. That was the five, how much was it? The 565.7. Okay. And at this point, we're ready to do, like we can, we could do our stresses too. So I don't want to repeat the steps, but the stresses we calculated before, because we'll have the same area of the plane, we are going to get 50 megapascals for both of those once again. All right, I'm going to do the same little trick I did last time. So I want to create a new layer. I want to pour in that yellow, I'm sorry, that white pigment. Uh, like that. Okay. I'll turn that down just a little bit so we can peek through. New layer, zoom in. No, not rotate. Zoom in. Okay. Fine pin. I'll use blue this time. 
There is my stress element. That's in the x prime y prime coordinate system. And we're in kind of a different subproblem as the one previously. So if you wanted to do an x double prime and a y double prime to distinguish this coordinate system from the prior, that would be OK. I'll leave it just like this. And now we need our stresses. So now we have tension. That's the one that we couldn't figure out before. Remember from the other cut, but now we know what it is. That one is 50 megapascals. And here is that shearing force. So boop, 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 boop. And that is 50 megapascals of shearing stress. And what are we missing here? So this analysis will not give us sigma y prime. We don't know it from this analysis. What we can do is combine our two analyses. So, OK, awesome. What I'll do is take that last one we did, enlarge it, put it over here. Add the other one that we did. Let's see if I can superimpose these at all. Okay. Not terrible, not terrible. I think it's going to be best to sketch over all of them with our final final solution so that it's not as crazy looking all right final final solution here is your stress element okay and you know whichever coordinate system you've set up you've got to go with one or the other um, but let's just draw the stresses on this one so i have tension tension 50 i have Tension, tension, 50. And I have shear, 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 50. OK. That is our state of combined stress. Zoom back in, put it right there where we started. For any particle that is aligned at this orientation, right about like that. Okay, any particle that is aligned at that orientation of, of 45 degrees is in essence going to look like that. Now, let's do one other thing. So before we get into the other method, which is the stress transformation equations, um, we also have an ability to set up this plane. I'll call this one CC. I could put it right there if I wanted to, but that real estate's crowded. So I'll move it over here just for convenience. So we could take plane C, C, and we could look at a stress element that is aligned to our global X, Y. And if I were to take that free body, I've got 800 newtons of tension. I can divide that by 8 millimeters squared, the area of the circle, the cross section. That'll give me 100 megapascals. And so if I wanted to draw this stress element, this one's plain and simple, 100 megapascals. Right, so we've solved. So basically, all of this work we've done so far was essentially method one. So take two different cuts, AA and BB. They're cut at 90 degrees from each other. That's going to give you an opportunity to figure out all the stresses at a point in that coordinate system. Okay. 
Now we took another cut and did a stress element in the native XY stress. And that will be the input for our stress transformation equation. So we're into method two and here is how method two works. So method two, stress transformation equations. All right, here's the idea. We have inputs to the equation and we have outputs to the equation. Our inputs are in the XY coordinate system. So we're looking at this little stress element and we're being like, okay, stress in the X direction equals positive 100 megapascals for tension. Stress in the Y direction equals zero. Our shear stresses in the XY plane are equal to zero. That's everything with the XY coordinate system. Now, our outputs are things we want to know, specifically stresses we want to know that live in the X prime, Y prime coordinate system. So to go from input to output, we have to know how much are you rotating? What is theta equal to? Okay, so we've got to choose a coordinate system. I'm going to choose this one for this next step. I'm going to choose this to be my X prime. I'm going to choose this to be my Y prime. I can overlay that with my original X and Y, and that will give me a chance to set up theta with a proper sign convention. Okay, so based on this picture here, using these equations, I'm going to do theta equals positive 45 degrees. Okay, and what the equations are going to tell us are, what the equations are going to tell us is, are, I don't know, I've talked myself into a corner, are the following, sigma x prime equals what, sigma y prime equals what, tau x prime y prime equals what, and what we expect to get out of this, what we expect to get out of this is this picture. So we expect to see tension of 50 in the X prime direction, tension of 50 in the Y prime, and a shearing stress of 50. And that will come out with the correct sign. And we'll get back to that at the end. Make sure that you understand the tricky, tricky sign convention for shear stress. Okay, in the stress transformation equations, you have a bunch of double angle formulas. So I'm going to go ahead and not just put theta here, but I always double it. So twice theta, that's a positive 90 degrees. And um, I know that the cosine of 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees. I'm kind of thinking of the unit circle to remember this, but I know that this one is zero and I know that that one is one. All right, here are the equations. I'm going to pause the video, copy them down, and then resume. All right, so here are the stress transformation equations copied down for you. And this problem is delightful because there's lots of zeros. So the first thing I'm going to do, see all these double angles throughout here. So where 2 theta equals 90, cosine 90 is equal to 0. So that's going to 0 out that term. And therefore, this whole thing will 0 out. Same thing here. Same thing here. Um, our sine of 90 is equal to 1, so that is equal to 1, that is equal to 1, that is equal to 1. If we look back at our inputs, sigma y is 0 and tau xy is 0, so we get across more stuff out. I'll go ahead and change my color to green. 
Okay, so sigma y is zero, tau xy is zero, tau xy is zero. Sigma y is equal to zero, sigma y is equal to zero. And now we're ready to actually do the equation. So sigma x we had calculated as 100 megapascals. So we have 100 divided by 2 equals 50 megapascals. That one, of course, is positive or tensile. Next up, sigma y prime. Again, 100 divided by 2, that's 50 megapascals. That is tensile. Next up tau x prime y prime equals minus 100 divided by 2. So this one will be a negative 50 megapascals. All right. And so what this is, is our clue for how to actually draw this. This is the exception to the rule. When you use the stress transformation equations, you will get a positive or negative sign out of it. That will tell you how to construct the stress element. At this point in the process, all we're going to do is take these three values that we just calculated, one, two, and three, and draw them on a stress element in the x prime, y prime coordinate system that we started with. So let's just get this out of here. We no longer need it. See if I can get everything I need on the screen. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Here is my stress element in the x prime, y prime coordinate system. x prime direction, tension 50. y prime direction, tension of 50. Okay, so that one, that one, that one, and that one. 50. 50. Tau xy minus 50. So let's remember that definition. Tau x prime y prime equals minus 50 megapascals. A shear stress on the positive x plane in the um, positive y direction is defined as positive. You got to check two things because there's two subscripts. So do you want to know which plane is it on, which face, and um, which direction? So we want ours to be negative. So we're going to go to the positive x prime face. And we're going to draw this in the negative y prime direction because of that sign. OK, here's my x prime face right there. My negative shear stress goes down like that. Once you have one, you can find the others. That one, that one, that one, and that one, magnitude 50. Take a close look at that. Get the same answers as our manual method, which I left right here. Should look familiar. Sorry, it's all it's all pixelated now, but it's still there. All right, so that's method two. Method three, I said, was using more circle, and I'm not going to get into that, that one because this video is long enough already. But there is one other shortcut. If you're just asked for what is the maximum shear stress of a element loaded in axial tension and compression, tau max occurs at theta is plus or minus 45 degrees and tau max is equal to sigma max divided by 2. 
So the same way that when we looked at plane CC, we figured out, oh, maximum tension, 100. All I have to do is divide that by 2, and I get a maximum shear stress of 50 megapascals. Of course, that is just a magnitude of magnitude, magnitude. To show the direction, you would have to sketch it, and that would involve either using method 1 or method 2 to deduce the correct direction of all the vectors. Whew, thanks for tuning in. This was kind of kind of a long one. Very, very detailed explanation. I sure hope this is helpful to you. Have a fantastic day.